Welcome all to the weekend classroom of Islamic College Difficult Podcast. I'm Dr. Radhika Vijay and I'm doing a weekend classroom after a really long time because I had to give a break because I had to relaunch my podcast. I hope in case you don't know, you better know that. And now I have planned to do the episodes on Monday, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday. So let's get started with the Monday episode. You all know in the weekend classroom, what we do is revise, examine and learn. We just evaluate ourselves how much we have gained throughout the week and how much we all need to recollect and what all we need to revise. What is the most important part? But yes, surely for the details, you have to visit my website www.ispharmacologydifficult.com for all the podcast details and the episodes. So let's get started with the Monday episode. Initially, I did with the definition of the drug. So I told you about how basically the definition of the drug started, but then slowly and slowly, it was not able to cover the few of the drugs which are not involved in the direct cure of a disease. So WHO in 1966 gave a proper definition, rather I should say a standard definition for the drug. And what was that definition? It was any substance or product which is used to or intended to be used to modify or explore the physiological states and the pathological systems for the benefit of the recipient. Now that is the exact standard definition of the drug. It is a complete definition. It covers all the drugs and all the other substances which are used for the well-being and the benefit of the recipient. Got it? Then uh, that was all that I did in the first episode on Monday. On Monday, I also uh, published another episode and that was all about the basic broad divisions of the subject pharmacology. So all in all broadly, pharmacology is divided into two main branches, pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics. So pharmacodynamics is what the drug does to the body and pharmacokinetics is what the body does to the drug. So that is one line description. And if you're a big nerd, you need to know more details. For that, you have to listen to my podcast. That was all that I did on Monday. Moving over to the Wednesday episodes. The first one I covered was about the more subdivisions and branches of pharmacology. I started it with the description about the toxicology. So toxicology, you can guess it right, it's the science of the study of the poisons, but it also involves a lot many other aspects. It involves the detection, the diagnosis, the prevention, and also the cure of the poisoning. And in detail, a lot many other things also. But I did not end up with toxicology, it was so toxic topic. So I had to do something positive to end up this whole episode. And I gave you, I talked about pharmacotherapeutics. Yes, that is for the benefit of all the patients. How can you treat a particular disease by the application of drug knowledge and the knowledge of pharmacology clinically in the right manner, in the right steps by covering all the knowledge that you have known by knowing the pharmacodynamics and the pharmacokinetics of a particular drug. So that was a really positive thought and the episode ending is very good. All is well, that ends well. Moving over to our next episode for the day and on the same day Wednesday I covered another uh, episode regarding the branches and the subdivisions of pharmacology. I started the episode with the discussions about chemotherapy. Now chemotherapy initially was only known as the study of the substances that are used for the uh, eradication of the infective organisms or parasites but now it has broadened and since you are a student at the present era you know that chemotherapeutic agents also cover the entire cancer agents so uh, all in all broadly they can be pharmacodynamically active agents or substances or they can be simply chemotherapeutic agents so after chemotherapy i talked about the clinical pharmacology clinical pharmacology is very very important it forms a scientific basis for all the drug knowledge and for the application of the drug knowledge clinically because clinically you can sharpen your skills clinically you can apply your theory if you are only dealing with the theory it is all in vain you have to serve the benefit of the recipient and that is done clinically 
by proper application, by the skill, by the expertise, and by proper observation. How the things are happening, what side effects are going on, how the drug is taking its course, everything is known clinically. That all is covered in clinical pharmacology and uh, it also forms the basis for the evidence-based medicine. It also uh, gets to know about the rational drug prescribing and the rational use of drug. Then next, I ended the episode with the discussions about pharmacoepidemiology. So pharmacoepidemiology is also very, very important because epidemiology means, yes, you guessed it right, it has to do something with the population, but the drug effects studied on whole population are very important to be known because individual alone does not tell us about the risk-benefit ratio. So uh, if you study the drug on a population, you get to know, you ascertain the risk-benefit ratio. And that is so important for determination on the population as a whole because it gives the right idea of what, how the drug will affect the majority of people. That is very important. That was all for the, uh, this particular day. Then on Friday, yes, I started my talks with uh, more subdivisions of pharmacology and I really covered a lot many. I gave you one second to calculate all. I don't know whether you were able to do that or not, but yes, there were quite a few of the branches that I did on Friday and uh, they were very important and you should really know them you should not confuse amongst them uh, let's uh, start on our rapid fire uh, branches now the first one was pharmacognosy the study of the sources of the drug and its different aspects is all included in pharmacognosy second one yes i remember it's pharmacogenetics uh, the genetic variations uh, leads to how it affects the drug responses and the drug metabolism in an individual. All are studied in pharmacogenetics that forms the basis of the individual drug therapy. Next one was pharmacogenomics. How is it different from genetics? So uh, it is an application of the genomic technology for the benefit of the recipient. Then I talked about uh, next pharmacoeconomics. Yes, economics, you can guess it right. It is related with the cost. That is a very important aspect when you're doing studies and research work because you have to know, you have to focus on the cost effectiveness of the whole drug therapy and the drugs that are being used. We just cannot afford to be so expensive and all these things. We have to observe nicely that whether the whole thing is done in a cost effective manner or not because that's also a very important aspect of this subject, pharmacology. So a uh, study of the cost effectiveness of the total drug therapy and the individual drugs forms this whole part and the study of pharmacoeconomics. Next, I talked about a practical branch of pharmacology and that was pharmacy. So pharmacy is the art of compounding, preparation, dispensing of the drugs in the right dosage form for the right proper administration for the benefit of the recipient or the patient. So pharmacy is very important and this is one of the practical branches of pharmacology. It also covers a lot many other things like drug standardization, drug purity, quality control and so many other aspects. But uh, basically the definition is what I gave you just now. Then I told you about pharmacoceutics. Pharmacoceutics is related to the large scale drug manufacturing. Then I told you about, uh, yes, I remember, clinical pharmacy. See, application of pharmacy clinically and then studying its effects, what is going on on the clinical side, that is so important. We just cannot ignore. I told you how clinical aspect is so important while we are studying the subject pharmacology. So application of the pharmacy clinically, therapeutically is all that covers in clinical pharmacy. And lastly, I talked about biopharmaceutics. Yes, that is another very important branch because you should know the definition. Uh, definition, knowing will do. So uh, the effect of the different drugs on the therapy, uh, how it affects in different manner. So that is biopharmaceutics, okay? So uh, these all finishes with the branches. The What I wanted to tell you, actually there are innumerable branches, but what I wanted to cover is all of these. Uh, then I talked about on the next episode on same Friday, I did another episode. In that, I told you about the evolution of the drug therapy. See, history is so exciting and it, is, it makes the subject so interesting. History. Story is always interesting and it adds up value to what we are knowing. Because if we get to know the olden times, the olden aspect, how things took shape, how the things were built upon, 
So that really gives an insight into what was going on, then what changes took place, what added upon, what was deleted, everything you ought to know, you should know actually. Knowing the current scenario is not enough. You should know what happened in the past and how did it change and what was important, what was not important. All these things are so important. So I told you that in the early ancient times in Mesopotamia, India, China, etc., uh, superstitions were taking a lot of belief for, they formed a belief for the medicinal system. Later on, scientific approach, it ruled over all these things. And uh, then first of all came the humoral theory then came the invention of the microscope, then the germ theory, and today what we are doing is rational drug uh, based on all scientific things, observation, clinical aspects. So that's how things evolved. Okay, the modern drug therapy came into being. Then I told you a little sneak peek into the sources of drug information by telling you the major categorization of the sources of drug information into primary, secondary, and tertiary. Now, the original format is the primary, then next level is secondary, and the summary of the both, including the most important things to be told in the form of textbooks, etc., is the tertiary part. So, I told you a tip also that day, you remember? I told you if you want to study something, you're finding some questions, some research work, some query that is worrying you. So, go the back way, the reverse way, starting from the tertiary literature to the secondary to the primary, that will really make it more convenient and ease it out because if you're starting from the primary you will end you may end up in a complication and confused manner so go the other way around start from the reverse way start from the tertiary to secondary to primary got it then uh, for the week the last episode was on saturday i did only one episode and uh, that covered the official drug information sources official means published by the government the official drug compendia and there are two of them pharmacopoeias and formularies i told you about the pharmacopoeia the physician body uh, it governs the publishing of this particular uh, literature while on the other hand formulary is uh, ruled over or supervised by the pharmacist group so uh, pharmacopoeias covers a lot of information, but they are not of much importance for the doctors and physicians in general. It is more important for the drug regulators and drug manufacturers. So that is uh, all the details. But, but formulary is so important for the physician's day-to-day -day reference because it covers a lot of general things which are really helpful in the day-to-day -day prescribing of the drug. So it is good for you, for all the doctors, for all the physicians, because it covers a lot of normal general and a lot of details about the drug itself so uh, i gave you examples of both the things they have different names in different regions with a little variations according to the regions and countries for india the pharmacopoeia is ip that is indian pharmacopoeia and nfi that is national formulary of india then they are also published respectively in britain and in usa they have their own names and then they have their own governing bodies. But yes, they both are official government publications. The It is all supervised by the government. That leads us to a question. What is the non-official drug compendia? Well, surely that will be discussed in the next episode on Monday. Coming over in the next week. So that all we ended with the week in classroom. For all the updates and the latest episodes, do visit www.ispharmacologydifficult.com and where you can sign up for my e-newsletter also. It contains all the updates about the medicinal things, about the drug information, the latest drugs, and it also contains uh, updates about my podcast. You can also follow me on different social media handles, uh, the exact a uh, follow-up link is given here and there uh, you can follow me on Twitter, Insta, Facebook and LinkedIn. All are with the same name is Pharmacology Difficult. Then, that is how we come to the end of this particular video. If you are listening for the first time, do follow my podcast wherever you are consuming this episode on whatever platform. If you are seeing this video for the first time, do subscribe and if, it, if you found it of real value, Please hit a like button and share the video among your friends and colleagues. And uh, all in all, I want to tell you that stay tuned, stay safe, stay happy, stay enlightened. Thank you.